Hello class. I want to now go through an example problem where we're going to look at a molecule and predict how many signals we would expect and predict their splitting pattern. So here's the molecule that I want to analyze. Okay, so that's the molecule. How many signals and what are their splitting patterns? Well, first we need to make sure we have identified all the hydrogens. And so we have a hydrogen here and a hydrogen there. This is a methyl, so there's three there, three there, and three there. But gotta be very careful. There's one right there as well. Okay. So now we do our analysis. We ask, we're just asking questions. And the questions are, hey, are those three hydrogens equivalent? And we know from the rule that I stated that those three hydrogens are, methyl hydrogens are always equivalent. So those three can be labeled as signal A. Now signal A or protons A are going to be chemically distinct from those two. So we can say those two are definitely B because A and B are different, different connectivity, different chemical environment. If you don't trust yourself or don't believe me, then do the replacement test and you will see that they are chemically distinct. Now the question that I have are, are these two chemically distinct or equivalent. And if you do the replacement test, you will find that they are in fact equivalent. So those would be HB. This carbon has no hydrogen, so that won't give us a signal. This carbon does have a hydrogen directly attached to it. It's this guy right there. So that would be HC. Now the question is, uh, so we already know that this methyl is equivalent, so we can say D, and then those are equivalent, so we could say E, okay? But it begs the question, are E and D equivalent? And you will find that when you do the replacement test, D and E actually aren't two separate signals. They are equivalent, so they give us one signal. So that and that are equivalent, okay? So now let's predict the splitting pattern. So we have A, B, C, and D. So A, those protons, how are they gonna get split? Well, we notice that it's attached to that carbon. So we have to go to the adjacent carbon right there. How many hydrogens are on the adjacent? Two. So two plus one is three. So that's going to be a triplet for A. Now what is the splitting pattern for B? Well, B is attached to this carbon, so we have to go to the adjacent carbons. That's adjacent, but there's no hydrogens, so that's a zero. That's an adjacent carbon. How many hydrogens are attached? Three. So 0 plus 3 equals plus, okay, so let me explain what I did there. So this is 0, so 0, plus, well, let, let me take that back, okay? So there's no protons there, so we just count how many protons there are, and there's 3 of them. So 3 plus 1 is 4, giving us a quartet. Okay, what is C going to give us? Well, the H, HC right here is attached to this carbon. So we have to go to the adjacent. There's none there, but that's adjacent and that's adjacent. And those two adjacent carbons that I'm going to point to in yellow, those are adjacent carbons and the, they are equivalent. So what we do is the N plus N rule, how many are there? Three 
and 3. So that's a total of 6. So 6 plus 1 is 7. So that would be a septet. All right. Oops, let's get that back there. And now let's look at HD. HD are these two right here, but they're equivalent. So you treat them as one group. So that, that group of carbons is attached to that one. And how many hydrogens are directly attached to that carbon? Only one. So HD is going to give us a doublet. And so that's how it is done. Any questions, let me know.